Happy 2023, fellow carburetors. But I know a lot of you are probably thinking 2022 wasn't happy for you, and you are projecting that 2023 will be likewise. If that's the case, what's happening is you are letting outside forces be the dominant thing controlling how you feel. Outside forces are often things we can't do anything about. Unmentionable stuff that I will not mention in this video. And I'm trying not to mention again and to put out of my head. And you should do the same. After you vote, that is. And that's all behind us. So there's nothing more you can do about outside forces. But there is one area you can control. And that's what you now need to focus on. You can have a happy 23 by changing what's going on inside your body. In this video, I want to focus on regulating blood sugar that you put in the tank. Putting sugar in the gas tank. Now, as we have all heard, people seem to have a lot of problems with blood sugar. But it's not because of carbs, and it's only partly because of refined sugar. The thing is, you want to eat carbs. Well, that's an interesting sentence, because I wasn't referring to your emotions. But... The reason you feel like eating carbs is because your body is getting you to feel that way. Because it's your body that wants the carbs. The body is meant for carbs. This low-carb craze, this latest incarnation, is really getting out of hand with the anti-carb sentiment. These people are just not being reasonable. Look at nature, and specifically, look at the fact that carbohydrates are in every single plant food and even animal products. Milk has lactose, and even meat is supposed to have glycogen storage, which is a form of sugar. But animals living in cages don't store much glucose because they don't exercise. So nature made carbohydrates to be a normal thing for everyone to consume. But, but people's bodies are having trouble regulating it. There's two main reasons for this. One is certain forms of carbs. I mentioned refined sugar. We all know that's bad. And there's also high glycemic foods, but there aren't as many as you would think. Whole plant foods that are classified as high glycemic include russet potatoes. Some people just say potatoes, but only russets are high glycemic. The others are medium. I've been eating russet potatoes lately to save money during this inflation, but I eat only like one russet per meal. And another food is watermelon. But watermelon's so low in calories that the fast absorption really doesn't cause problems. And that's about all I can think of. Now let's move on to the other reason People's blood sugar goes up and down so much and they can't keep it stable. The first one was carbs, certain carbs. The second one is fat. You don't hear this much these days because it seems like all of these propagandists for the fat industry or people just jumping on board the trend, they don't want to tell you this. But sugar spikes are just one problem. That's when sugar enters the blood really fast. And so the pancreas makes a lot of insulin. Then your sugar can drop too much. But another problem is when sugar stays in the blood. They, they never talk about this one. When sugar just doesn't leave the bloodstream, which is because of what they call insulin resistance, then the sugar stays there and the pancreas keeps making insulin because it senses the sugar. But the insulin's not working. The reason that is, they never talk about the reason. They just say, oh, sugar, sugar sugar's there. because, the, But the body can regulate that. So why does it have trouble regulating? Why is the insulin not connecting with the sugar and moving it out of the bloodstream? It's not because of the insulin. Something wrong with the insulin. No. It's not because of the carbs. Something gets in the way of the two things connecting. That something is fat. Fat takes days, somewhere around three days, to come and go from the bloodstream. And with Americans eating so much fat, higher than is natural for the human diet, and also eating carbs, that's the reason there's so much diabetes and blood sugar problems. Look, again, look at nature. Nature doesn't mix carbs and fat, very rarely. But food manufacturers mix the two, and those are the things people eat most, or they mix them with their meals. So fat and carbs get in each other's way in the bloodstream. Without the fat in the way, the carbs can leave the bloodstream, and the pancreas will have no problem regulating the blood sugar, keeping it stable, and then you will feel better. And also, when you eat this way, you can eat more food without gaining weight, as long as you're eating a lot of nutrient-dense foods. And with more nutrients, and more calories especially, that's going to make you feel better. People are always just trying to restrict the amount of food they eat because of all the problems they're having. Reduce fat consumption, and those problems will go away. It's pretty common for people to notice 
they feel better eating carbs. Yeah, I've heard from a few low-carbers lately. There's a lot of low-carbers introducing more carbs to feel better, but still on a high-fat diet, you can't eat much carbs without having these blood sugar problems. So the low-fat diet is really the way to go. Try sugar in your gas tank. I'm not going to get in the way. The more carbs make you feel, more better. The problems that we haven't put enough sugar in the gas tank. And no, it is not wearing out the pancreas because the insulin is working and then the pancreas can rest when the blood sugar normalizes. But when you're eating sugar and fat and you're getting this blockage issue, the pancreas never rests. These teachers on YouTube telling people to have a balance of carbs and fat and to eat fat to slow down the carbohydrates, that is completely backwards. A diet like that will have the pancreas making a lot more insulin than if you just ate a carb-based diet. All right, this video is reminding me that I have a few really old videos about happiness. I had a, a series called How to Be Happy. Those all dealt with emotions. Those videos got good reviews too. There's four of them, and I'll put the playlist up right here. Stuff that I've learned over my many decades. Give this video a thumbs up and share it out to the world who's entering 2023.